also have Q and A at the end of this session. Um, as we know, um, seagrass is one of the flowering plants which live in marine and estuarine. In Malaysia itself, we have approximately about 16 species of seagrass distributed along, along peninsula Malaysia, East Malaysia, Sabah, and Sarawak. Um, so that today, um, we invite our seagrass expert, uh, Professor Dr. Mutahara Zakaria, and I and I acquire research associate to give her talk on seagrass and potential utilization. Um, Prof. Dr. Mutahara um, has been working on seagrass for more than 20 years. She is an expert in seagrass taxonomy and ecology. Uh, and her current project is on seagrass transplant and rehabilitation at Sungai Pulai Eswari Johor. Um, without further delay, uh, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Mutahara uh, to give her talk on seagrass and their potential utilization. Uh, Prof, Prof may start now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Farah. Um, before I start, uh, um, I want to give me time to share my slides first. Can see my slide? Uh, yes, Prof. You can see your slide. Uh, still, uh, participants still come in. So, yeah. never mind. I can start now. Um, during 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 my presentation, actually, uh, if you think you want to know. Uh, directly about the, the if you have any question you can ask me directly never mind you can stop me because this is a sharing knowledge about the uh, seagrass and potential utilizations so um, we can uh, work uh, today uh, in, in informal uh, situations huh? okay this is topic given to me, seagrass and potential utilizations. Okay, my point, my main point today, actually, uh, I want to tell about the uh, seagrasses, their distributions, and where do we find seagrasses, and of course, the 16 species. Uh, seagrasses, beautiful uh, species. And then the importance here is importance and potential utilizations of the seagrass. People always um, ask about what is different between seagrass and seaweed. So that's why today I hope based on my uh, presentation today, uh, everybody very clear and then more people can join in to study about the seagrass. This is a research linking to the seagrass uh, utilization. Just for your information, if you want to study the utilization, the detail about the uh, users that one. So we have to study the fundamental parts. It's very, very important. So our UPM research teams, firstly, we study about the ecology, distribution, and systematic of seagrass resources in Malaysia. So based on this information, uh, the first time we study in 1994, uh, when I did my, my, my degree, and then uh, we continue with the seagrass resources, the utilization and development. Here, 
resources and utilization in number two, actually, uh, we study about the distribution, the ethno ethnobotanical study on aquatic macrophytes, especially on seagrass by the indigenous people, and also utilization of aquatic macrophytes for paper making. So then we also study about the molecular genetic and bio prospecting of marine macrophytes for novel products. So actually many more study can explore in, in seagrass area. And then at the same time, number two and number three, seagrass taxonomy, biology and habitat characteristic, we study, we culture indoor and outdoor for the uh, first time we culture is Halophila ovalis in actually this time we study this one in in uh, department of biology uh, faculty of science because of uh, when i did my phd i did in in faculty of science uh, upm and then uh, we also lastly during the of number one two three and then we come up with idea how to help the community how to maintain uh, the, the seagrass how to conserve the the coastal environment to make sure the seagrass and also the fishes in that coastal uh, environment can sustain so we focus the monitoring and assessment for the adaptations and rehabilitation oh, in the so, seagrass transplanting and rehabilitation and monitoring. Just for your information, we started this project since 2015 and then uh, till uh, 2020, then continue, continue uh, 2021 to 2025, uh, together with industry and also community. Hello. Hello. Thank you, bro. We can hear you. Okay, can hear me. So, seagrass synonymous to seaweed. Here, I just just uh, show to you the very beautiful color: green, red, brown, and also yellowish plants in the water. Which one is seagrass? Which one is seaweed? Later on, you can answer. But this is just to remind you, to inform you the very beautiful plants in the marine environments. Okay. When we talk about the seagrass, I'm always, uh, people always ask me, actually, what is different between seagrass and seaweed? I hope all of you can understand after this because of just for your information, seagrass actually is flowering plants, but their flower is not colorful like terrestrial plants, red color or yellow. No, their color only the white also transparent color. So they have structure similarly with terrestrial plant with roots, stem, rhizome, and also leaf with flowers, male and female, and also produce fruits and disseminate their seeds. So in terms of uh, how the uh, vegetation parts, they have horizontal stem or in other words, we call rhizome. Why we call rhizome? Rhizome meaning that they are uh, underground. So they, they, they have in the, uh, the structure actually under underground structure. So they have another stem we are called vertical stem. And then after that, they have leaf. They are leaf, uh, linear leaf, broad leaf, uh, most of the uh, the seagrass. When compared to the seaweed, seaweed mostly we eat, uh, we use every day for, for your information. Okay, uh, the seaweed also have a structure similarly with seagrass, but they never produce flowers. They produce sporangium and spore, and then we are called them tellers. Most of the color, they are various, many, many types of color, green, brown, and red, and sometimes yellowish or uh, bluish uh, color. And then their structure, we cannot call the, the, the rhizome part is... Uh, uh, rhizome. Uh, why? Because of 
they don't have a structure uh, connecting we are called vascular system so uh, that's why when we look in the um, wild environment in the natural environment might be we can uh, miss uh, this one about the, the the seaweed and also the seagrass halophila spinulosa because this is similar uh, similarly like the poco uh, we call uh, somali and then when we go uh, to this uh, distribution actually seagrasses area and species worldwide is very 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 interesting because of they only cover mostly in six region uh, in temperate north atlantic uh, in other area is a tropic atlantic mediterranean uh, temperate North Pacific, Tropical Indo-Pacific, and Temperate South Ocean. In terms of uh, this habitat, they are always related with coral reef, mangrove, and also in other seaweed area we are called kelp. Uh, globally, in terms of species, seagrasses only have 72 species, uh, uh, commonly divided into six groups. Yeah, it, yeah, this is a hydrocharitase, only 20 species, Simodoceaceae, uh, 17 species, Posidoniaceae, 8 species, Zosteraceae, 19 species, Rupiaceae, 6 species, and Potamo, Botanaceae, 2 species. When compared to other species, for example, seaweed, in Malaysia already have four, five, nine species. When compared to the world, why the seagrass only 72 species, but yeah, the, this species is very important. In terms of ecology, distribution and habitat, uh, this seagrass actually can survive or they can stay submerged, always submerged in the water. Uh, associated with coral reef, for example, this photo at uh, Pulau Sulu, uh, Sabah, or intertidal seagrass area at Tanjung Genting Mersing. This is uh, photograph actually during low tide. We can see very uh, huge, big area of the seagrass here. And then, of course, seagrass always related with mangrove. We can see the green color here. Actually, this is the shallow intertidal uh, in the mangrove area, the species is Halophila bicrae, the smallest species in the world. This is always related with um, mudflat, a mangrove area. And then they also can stay in semi-enclosed coastal lagoon, example in Sungai Paka, Terengganu. Most of the area of the seagrass, when related with the intertidal, always in the uh, mudflat and also a coastal environment. And then when we go in detail, look at here, very, very uh, beautiful, very clear water. During the high tide, we can't see the seagrass. Why? Because of they always submerge. And then that's why people always miss, uh, understand or misuse in that particular area, develop because of they don't know in that, in that area we have the the seagrass species. Then when they expose during low tide, we can see, we can work, we can walk uh, in, in, in the area around uh, the, the, the size of the area. This example in Johor, uh, around 23 or 18 to 23, 23 hectares in that particular area. So we can see during low tide, the seagrass exposed in the, um, uh, then, then people, local people can, can go in uh, in this particular area to collect uh, the, the, the species, other species related with the seagrass. And then uh, other than area, also uh, Sepangar Bay, this is uh, the area, it's shallow intertidal, and also uh, we can see also this species in the lagoon. Uh, and uh, the, the, the lagoon area. And then this is example of how we culture the seagrass. So in terms of area, 
Just now I mentioned about the six temperate, six region. So in Malaysia, very beautiful number for me, total only one, 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 triple one sites. Uh, for, for, for the time being, the seagrass ochre based on our research. And then in, in Peninsula Malaysia, 45 sites, Sabah, 57 sites, and Sarawak, 9 sites. And then in terms of species here, we can see uh, some uh, species uh, have previously only 15. Now we already record 16 because of the halophila uh, major actually is... Uh, the major species in the southeast uh, area. And then in terms of hectares, um, more or less uh, the, the, the area of the seagrass in Malaysia, total estimated area for uh, 400 plus hectares. And then um, when we look at, at this one, um, in terms of is it the seagrass area in the protected area or not? When we look here, the comparison, in Malaysia, actually, we have a total 51 uh, marine protected areas. And then uh, the seagrass here related with the protected area, actually in, in, in red color here, Pulau Tioman, Pulau Tengah, uh, Pulau Besar in this area, and also Taman uh, Abdul Rahman, uh, marine parks. So this is the, the area where the seagrass marine park area. And other than that, actually it's not in the marine marine park protected. So they are in coastal environments. Uh, in front of the Iquas also have a seagrass, very special species. First time recorded is Halophila decipient, actually in 1995 in, the, uh, in front of the Iquas. So that's why uh, the, 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 the area during the particular time is very, very clear, clear water because no coastal developments there. And then in uh, Sarawak, actually in Punang Sari, uh, first time recorded in 2002. Uh, so that's why now this area uh, they are trying to uh, protect, to become one of the marine area and marine protected area at the Sarawak. And then when we, other than that, it's not only ground rotting of the study, to, to study, to, to find where is the seagrass area. Because of if you want to study the utilization, we have to know the source, the resources, the habitat. And if you want to culture, we have to understand what is the, 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 the suitable uh, condition to make sure the seagrass can grow and then uh, later on we can use for other uh, things. So we also study about the satellite imaginary for seagrass detection, especially we started in Sungai Pulai Johor. And then we also already produced this one. And then uh, we have many uh, 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 about the, the, the uh, GIS. Okay, uh, to study uh, the seagrass, to map the seagrass area because of um, nowadays it's very uh, sophisticated or very difficult to go. So we use these uh, technologies uh, to map the, the, the seagrass either in the Lawas, Trengganu, and also in Kelantan. And we monitor, assess the impact of coastal reclamation activity on seagrass meadow in Sungai Pulai by using Landsat data. So we use the data, we use the data we have in 1994 until 2017. This is joint project with the uh, UTM uh, and also uh, now the, 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 the students or already staff at UMT, uh, Hossein, or we call a shop that. So this is our study about this, the seagrass mapping. And then now I want to, to tell you, to share with you about the uh, seagrass species in Malaysia. This is the scientific name. It's very, very difficult to pronounce. So the local, uh, the local people call and halas ecoriders. This is the bigger seagrass, more or less one to one point five meters the height. 
uh, local people call stew, pokok setu. And then uh, talasya hemperchai. This is the dugong grass. So why we are called rumput dugong. Asturian spoon grass, halophila bigger, right? The smallest sea grass in the world, rumput sudupaya. And then until uh, lastly is rupia maritima. How this species looks like. Just for your information, the dugon cannot eat the enhalus. Why? Because it's very hard. They, 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 they don't like to eat rumput dugong, uh, talasya hempricha, because they have um, well, what we call the taste uh, looks like uh, uh, mint. So the, the dugong is not like the, the talasya hempricha. When we study the dugong actually like the halophila and also the halodule species. And then how this species looks like? This is the seagrass. During low tide, in healthy seagrass, pokok setu, just now I mentioned, they have male, they have female flower, and they have fruits. You look at the, the male flower uh, in fluorescent will produce the pollen, we produce flowers more or less in one uh, in fluorescent uh, until thousand of those flowers. And then when they disperse, their peduncle or their stalk is very short in the middle, in the bottom. And then the female flower always have a long peduncle. This is curved peduncle. Then when the uh, antithesis happens, release their, their pollens. So the female flower waiting how they want to catch the, the pollen to make sure the fertilization happen. When they go grow uh, big, uh, longer or mature time, the, the, the peduncle become higher and then this is the fruits of the uh, seagrass. Uh, this is a very special, we can see every month. When we visit in this area, especially in Tanjung Adang and also in uh, Marambong Show, we can see the fruits, flowers, and the uh, uh, male or female in, 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 in monthly. So this is uh, local people like this, this fruit because of the taste like a bean. And then other than that, also similarly, with the uh, fruits of the enhalers. So they are called uh, Thalassia or Rumput Dugong. Thalassia hemperchai. Uh, so this species is very difficult to find their fruits, uh, their, their seed, uh, and also their flower in the uh, nature environment. Uh, however, in our group, uh, our research, uh, one time, uh, this one happened, uh, we, 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 we observe in the Mrambung show, but in Indonesia, in, 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 in uh, Thailand, we can see many times of the uh, flowers and fruits in the nature environments. So if you look here, the flower always color uh, white and sometimes it's transparent. So both of the species actually we can eat okay and then another species is the smallest one this is a uh, halophila bicora in in this world actually they occur we can found this species in nine countries only include malaysia so this is uh, the smallest because of i'm smaller size that's why i'm studying my phd about this species so this is the male and female of the uh, uh, halophila bicora this species is very special they have two types one we are called annual form and another one we are called perennial form why when we study um, for example in in pengkalanangka when i did my phd in uh, august september we can find all the seagrass lost. So I wonder why seagrass is not. And then some people mention because of disease, but I'm not believe. Uh, some of the, uh, of the people mention this is a climate change. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, believe that one. So that's why we continuously monitor, visited the area of Pengkalanangka until uh, uh, to 
and a half years, and then yet we discover actually these species in Pankalan Nangka, they are annual form, meaning that they grow and then produce food, a flower, fruits, and disseminate and then they have a dominant period one to two months that's why in that particular area at that time we can see the seagrass halophila bikra then after that the seagrass start to grow so that's why uh, in kemaman at kemaman you can see this one always continuously grow so that's why we are called periniform so we can see here a uh, flower uh, plants actually they have similar, they have to adapt to the environment to make sure they can, they can survive. So that's why if you want to study in detail, we have to understand. For example, if you want to study the antioxidant, if you want to study this one for pharmaceutical, we have to know the specific species, the, the specific species if, if you want to do the, 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 the further study about the seagrass. So, this is monoecious, meaning that male and female in plant. Just now, uh, the thalassia uh, is, is a dioecious, male and female in, in different plants. So other than that, we can see the halophila decipient. This is, looks like carpet in the water, very small uh, in, 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 in the size. And then they can grow, not only grow in the intertidal area, but they can grow, survive until 58 meters in, in the Australia. However, in Malaysia, especially in Pulau Redang, uh, Terengganu, this species uh, occur in the area uh, 20 to 23 meters. So that's why in Chagar Hutan, Pulau Redang, we can see the, the turtle, green turtle, and also the dugong because of that uh, green turtle like this species because of they are very, 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 very soft. This is also the, uh, the, the, the monoecious one. And recently in 2015, we found this uh, species uh, at Merambung Shoal uh, in the mud area, mud flat area. And then we look at here, uh, the, the species of the next is uh, the Halophila ovalis and you know, the Halophila major. We can see here, if we see Halophila oh. ovalis and Halophila major is same in terms of morphological structure. Mm -hmm. However, the size of the Halophila major is bigger. That's why they are called major. And then the Halophila minor is smaller size when compared to both uh, Halophila ovalis and Halophila major. How to study this one is I have to count the pair of cross vein for 100,000 of the species to make sure which one is the uh, Halophila ovalis and Halophila major and also Halophila minor. So that's why we move from the morphological uh, study, we study the, the genetic also about the, the species. This species is actually the seagrass. Um, the dugongs very like this one. Why? I'm very sure that one because I'm culture and transplant the seagrass in, in Marambung Shoal, Halophila Major. After three months, the dugong come in. We can see that the dugong trail in that particular area. So, and also in, in previous, we studied the stomach, dugong stomach, to study about the, the species. What is the species that dugong eat? And then, uh, this is the, the Halophila spinulosa. This is the compound leaf. So they have uh, male and also female like this. Uh, the special this species, actually they have a pair of leaf per node, but when they produce a, a male or female flower, they have another leaf. So the leaf in per node might be a three to four. So this is... A, the, the, the Halophila spinosin. This is photograph when we culture in the uh, Port Dixon. But during pandemic, the pandemic COVID-19, the seagrass uh, uh, cannot grow well because of might be stress. And never mind, we can, we can continue uh, later on uh, because we know how, how to culture uh, the, the seagrass. And then 
another dizzy species, Samodose, uh, Rotundata, Samodose, Serulata, the flowers, and then and then the fruit. This is very easy if we, we dive in the uh, Sabah, we can see a lot of species, this one. If you want to find the flowers, only if you are lucky, you can see this, this uh, reproductive parts. Okay, uh, looks like ice cream, this one. This is Halidule pinifolia and also Halidule unionis. Okay, you look at here, actually the male and the female flower of the both species actually the same. The difference between this one only, we can see their leaf tips. And of course, based on their uh, genetic. And then uh, this uh, Syringeodin citifoliums, uh, Rupia maritima, and also Thalassodendron ciliatum. So uh, if we look at here, for your information, if you find Rupia maritima first time in the Malaysia recorded dekat mana? In, in Perifil. But now the Rupia maritima, we can find this one. This species actually we culture in, 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 uh, in aquarium tank. And then uh, this species uh, can produce their, their flower. Both species, actually they have um, what we call inflorescent, jamba. Uh, uh, the, the, the inflorescence of the flower, not uh, solitary flower, flower, one flower. Uh, this uh, rhodian actually we can eat. Okay. Uh, any question? Okay, now we will go in detail about the, the seagrass taxonomy, biology, and habitat characteristics. This is um, we study in the uh, number three and number two, just now I mentioned. So we study the laboratory culture of the seagrass. Um, I'm started doing culture of this grass, but I never mentioned to other people because for me, it is a secret might be. So I started in 1994 um, when I did my final year research in a faculty of fisheries. Uh, so this is, and then until now, Actually, I, I don't like uh, to culture seagrass, just to tell you in from the beginning, but always remind, if we don't like something, so might be Allah will give to me. To me. So that's why now, because of since started from the beginning, I culture the seagrass until now I have to, I, I face the, 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 the situation to transplant, to culture the seagrass uh, in the tank and then lastly to grow the species in the uh, environment to make sure this, uh, this, this seagrass always sustain. And then when we culture this one, Japaside, uh, this is uh, the, the, the uh, pioneer study about the, the seagrass culture. So we produce two materials. Actually, seagrass similar to the tapioca. We can see, uh, or sugar cane. We can culture this one, rhizome devoid of leaf. Without leaf, only by using the rhizome or rhizome with leaf. Just for your information, when we study, the rhizome devoid of leaf is better grow when compared to the rhizome with leaf. We can, we can study uh, by in the aquarium temp uh, without the, the basket, whatever. Just uh, plant this one in the uh, substrate. And then they produce flower. We know the growth cycle of this species. So that's why uh, we started this one. And then uh, within five to 10 years. So now we know how to transplant this species in the natural environment. Okay. Uh, we are luckily in Park Dixon, you can see the fruits. Uh, the Thalassia hemperchai culture in the Iaquas produce flower and fruits of the uh, Thalassia hemperchai. So the uh, first time uh, my students see, however, this one actually we study in, in, in Department of Biology uh, or in, in Bintulu, we, we, the, the Thalassia hemperchai actually produce flower and seed, flowers and fruits. Uh, then, because of we, we want to study this one, so that's why we started to crazy idea. Instead of study in the marine environment, we start to uh, convert 
is it the seagrass can grow in the freshwater environment? So we use two species. And then Alhamdulillah, the Halophila bikara actually can stay in the freshwater environment. Why? Because of in, 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 in the real environment, the natural environment, these species actually, they grow in the uh, salinity between uh, 2 to 32. TPC. So that's why we started this one. We have idea to, to study these species in the uh, freshwater environment. And also oh, they can grow in the until uh, 55 uh, PPT. So this is the seagrass uh, in the aquarium uh, in freshwater, uh, Halophila bikra in in my room before the COVID-19. So after COVID-19, uh, so I clean everything, then we start to work from home. In my home, I don't have seagrass, but I have many plant uh, vegetables and, uh, and, then, and uh, fruits, not the seagrass. I have to change my, uh, my situation. So now you already know, People already know about the, 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 the seagrass species. Now we go the importance and potential utilization. So we can see here, seagrass resilient, seagrass restore water quality, restore connectivity, restore functionally important species, seagrass cover, seagrass species and dynamic diversity, and lastly, restore water quality. We see the seagrass ecosystem services. What's so important about seagrass? We look at here, seagrass meadow in terms of fishery yeah, form the basis of the world primary fishing ground, supplying 20% of the world fisheries. So you look at here, just only 72 species is very, very important in the sector of fisheries and also have to poverty elevation. Why? Because of they provide vital nutrition for the close to 3 billion people and 50% of them then protein to 400 million people in the third world. This is very important statement about the importance of the seagrass and also seagrass ecosystem services. Actually, we can do research. Habitat for marine culture. Why? I mentioned here. Because this is uh, actually this is the desiree food for fish and shellfish. So that's why in aquaculture sector, based on these ecosystem services, we can study in detail about the seagrass. So also can study for the green manure. Roofing, most this one is uh, uh, related with the ecotourism, especially in, in, in Philippines. And of course, in medicinal, food and water, quality, cost of protection, climate change, swimming, and, and so on. So, so this is the seagrass ecosystem services and important of the seagrass in the world, actually. And then when we look at here, seagrass science and research in East Asia, are we going in the right direction? So social ecological systems actually in interconnecting between the forest, mangrove, seagrass, beds, and also coral reef. This is study by my colleague for test since 2010 already about the chemical, physical, biological, and also human impact or social about the, the seagrass. And then this is seagrass not only related in the, 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 the marine environment, but also in the mud flat. Seagrass grow in the mud, on, on, on the mud flat. And then, of course, in the mud flat, we have many, many types of the fauna, cockles, uh, uh, sea cucumber. So that's why uh, the other animal associated become the diversity is higher because of in that particular area, they have a seagrass. Um, in terms of uh, seagrass uh, ecosystem, this one, how do, uh, they, 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 they support each other? Seagrass ecosystem contribute to the people, for example, human well-being, 
anthropogenic asset, that they have the material, bioindicator, food for uh, detrivos, uh, nursery. So if you want to uh, study to sustain our species, so we have to know uh, what species actually uh, stay or always associate with a seagrass area. So just mention to you, this is uh, example of the seagrass uh, in, 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 the, in the area. So this is the example is an example species. Okay, later on I will inform you. Uh, so in, in Malaysia, in Malaysia, actually um, major seagrass area and their importance. We look at here, what is the species here? The, the Tanjung Adang, the bigger seagrass area, actually in, in Johor, the bigger seagrass area in Peninsula Malaysia, 14 to 23 hectares previously, 100 plus because of coastal environment, coastal uh, development. So that's why the, the seagrass is, is reduced. But never mind, we, we can a protect, we can see uh, based on our, our, our study. And then um, always related, the seagrass actually always related in the uh, example, dugong, um, strombus, uh, and, and, and so on. And then we look at here. An example in Kelantan, because I'm from Kelantan, that's why this is my study area. The Halophila bicara and Halodiol pinifolia in this particular area, so that's why local people use this area for the aquaculture study. So, and then they have restaurant. Uh, why? Because of very clear water. And then in Sabah, always related culture of kapapikers and lobster in seagrass area. So, do you look at here the kapapikers the Seaweed actually they are hang in the in the top and then in the bottom the seagrass species and then the lobster will uh, culture in that particular area. All the photograph actually we study uh, we take uh, our our photograph is not from 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 the books or whatever because of this is the really really we have to know how to study the seagrass that's why in our group we are called Jalak Lenteng around Malaysia to study about the, the seagrass. So area of seagrass being used for monoculture of seaweed. So people always mention seaweed, 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 but they don't know actually the seaweed actually culture in the seagrass area. Why? Seaweed need clear water. And the seagrass actually is the filter water. So that's why the seaweed always culture in the seagrass area because they have very, very clear water. People always know about the kapapikas, but another species, we have many, many species for the seaweed culture in the, in the, in the uh, sea grass area. Uh, this is still secret. Next time, we study about that one. This is um, research about uh, in terms of education. We can study many. Nutrient status, why we study the nutrient status? Why we study bio bioactive compound? Why we study antioxidant? And then why and why and why? Because of this species actually is very, very special, become a nursery ground. So when eat, uh, the, the, the fish eat the seagrass, they become healthy. So that's why we try to study. We, 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 that you can explore. Many people can explore about the bioactive compound in the, in the seagrass because not many people like to go uh, to, the, to the field. Most of the people very happy in the lab. But I'm like to go to the field. In terms of this one, the ecosystem in, in the case of the Southwest Johor, Marambau Show, is very, very uh, important. They have the, the, for example, the provisioning services, traditional capture fisheries. So, Direction of change because of degrading this one, because of what? Coastal development. So, however, we can maintain this one if, uh, if, if one, if we monitor the seagrass nicely. So, we have joined institution with the uh, government, 
also uh, with the industry about the, the, the study uh, to make sure the seagrass is the uh, sustained. And then what is species? In the reality in Malaysia, this is the species, uh, either fish, crustacean, econodums, and seaweed in the seagrass area. So meaning that in aquaculture, a person, so we can always uh, relate it uh, in terms of how to make sure the species of this one uh, sustain. So we have to protect, we have to conserve the seagrass. Why? Because the seagrass is very, actually is a um, main point for to, to study the, the, the animals. And then this is uh, an example of the fishes in a seagrass area. Epina Tavina, we captured this one in Lawas. And many moths, this one. And then uh, these local people can catch these uh, traditional fishes in the seagrass area. During low tide, uh, people, local people go to, the, the, to the, this one and then they uh, collect the bivalve, very special uh, Levi Strombus canarium or local people call gong gong. In Peninsula Malaysia, in Johor, 20 ringgit per kilo. But when we go to the restaurant, the, the per, per kilo uh, become 30 to 50 ringgit per kilo. So this is uh, one of the importance of the seagrass related with the uh, aquaculture or fisheries. Okay, in other species, uh, not only uh, fisheries, uh, not, not only animal, also we can see the, the seaweed uh, in that uh, particular area, uh, calopa and also gracilaria species. Okay, um, according to the Nalina uh, 2021, this is uh, a species. Um, in the uh, Tanjung Adang and Marambong show. Actually, this species is actually, we, we can uh, commercialize. So meaning that we can culture uh, this one um, together with the seagrass and then can be, can, 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 can utilize this, this seagrass area and also uh, to, has to culture the, the species, for example, Anadara. Anadara, not only Anadara granosa, Anadara grossa in mud flat. You must remember this Anadara uh, gubernaculum always related with the seagrass. And then uh, others. Local people call a sea cucumber very special, is Labi Labi. So that's the first time people in Johor mentioned to me, uh, Meg. Come, I, uh, come, I want to see with the, about the Labi Labi. I'm very uh, excited. What is Labi Labi? Then when we go there, actually, it's not Labi Labi. That one is sea cucumber. Local people call Labi Labi. It's very special. And then you can eat raw. My student, I'm not. Just, just to see how then. And in other area, always, uh, always related with, with the seagrass. They use meadow import, uh, support important fisheries. Uh, this is an example uh, published by the Mackenzie and Al to zero to one about the, the, the importance of the seagrass. And then socio-ecological system perspective of seagrass ecosystem in Wakatobi in Indonesia. This is several species. Uh, also, the latest info by Jeffrey at R2021. And then uh, also study by the uh, Jaman now in, in UTM about the dugong or marine mammals in the seagrass area. You can see here the green turtle and also dugong grease the seagrass. And then uh, just I want to show to you, this is the evidence. Um, this is the dugong trail. Actually, this area, we transplant the seagrass, Halophila ovalis, Halophila spinulosa, and I do Halophila major. After three months, we monitor monthly, and in the month, uh, 
the three months, we can see the dugong trail come in, the dugong come in in the testicle area. Not only this one, the person also study about dugong mentioned the same thing. Just now, just uh, after we transplanting tools, that's why the evidence, why the cigars, uh, the, the dugong actually like the halophila ovalis area. We can see the uh, seahorse here. And then number four, we can see sea anemone. In local people, they call buran. Actually, this is very nice. I eat this one. Uh, and then one of the a potential species might be to culture this one in, 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 uh, in detail to study about that one in fishery. Why? Because of local people uh, like this species. And uh, Indonesian students, when they did study uh, the internship together with me, they eat this one. We are called rendang puren. Ah, very nice. Uh, uh, the, the taste of the this the sea anemone we can eat. This species is only always related with the seagrass area. Okay, not only in Marambo we 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 can find this species in uh, Pulau Setindan, in in Pulau Redang and so on. Okay, other than that, seagrass always related with other species. In other species we also study about. Uh, people can study macroalgae. So in terms of this one, we can study. The important, what is the, 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 the important of this one? Most of the people always mention the kapai picus is very good. When compared to other species, actually in terms of carrageenan, kapai picus is lower when compared to Jeladela. Already studied in other area, but Malaysia not yet. So that's why many things can study together with the seagrass. And then people ask, is it can eat this one? Yes, we can eat the edible seed of the Enhalus ocaridis and also uh, Thalassia hemprechai. This is food from Enhalus ocaridis, the cookies, study by home. Oh, 1999 by Montano from Philippines. Why? Because of Philippines have very huge seagrasses. And then this seagrass, for example, example, Syringodium, Acetifolium also can eat. We pickle this one. Most of the Malaysian eat chili, pickle and pickle of chili. But in the Philippines and Thailand, we, they eat Syringodium, Acetifolium. Very uh, and then, uh, in terms of starch, because of we can we, we can eat the, the, the this one. So we study in detail about the starch content in comparison of the properties and stages uh, from seed and rhizome of uh, anhalus. So might be during the, 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 the juvenile stages, so we can mix this starch with other, uh, other, other, other uh, starch. So to give, uh, to supply to the um, animals or fishes during the juvenile stages. And then in, in um, Thailand, they concern about the, the food. So that's why they study the local knowledge management about the what is the species occur in the seagrass area. Uh, then uh, the similar, they can use this uh, seagrass ecosystem, provide important contribution to other people. Uh, not only in Malaysia, and then in terms of ecotourism. So when we go to the uh, island, we want to see the clear, the, the, the clear water, 30 meter. When we uh, stay on the boat, we can see what is uh, the, the, the resources in the water. If we have a seagrass, so that's why the water become clear. So this is an example. The seagrass is used in the ecotourism, then related also with the coral. And then if we want to study in detail, we want to know in detail about the resources, uh, study about the, uh, explore about the seagrass uh, utilization, you can, eat, uh, you can read this, this, this book. Okay. Other than that, in terms of utilization, we study paper making uh, uh, using uh, seagrass. 
this is we only use the seagrass when we go to the field uh, the they they cut by the propeller so we collect the species of the seagrass we we we, we try uh, to study the uh, paper making and then uh, uh, to produce a decorative paper from the seagrass okay and then uh, this is uh, some of the uh, we study the fiber characteristic so because of if you want to produce a paper we have to um, study the fiber characteristic not only the seagrass we study this one but also in freshwater plant because of freshwater plants uh, always related with weeds so people call wheat we collect that weeds and then we produce a paper and then of course we study the, the fiber first okay and then we also study molecular genetic. Uh, this is still continue. So if you want to study in detail this one, so we can study about the molecular genetic of the study. The chemical composition, nutrient analysis, you can see here always in terms of macronutrient, nitrogen always higher in the seagrass species, either halophila, ovalis, halophila, halophila, uh, uh, spinulosa, and so on. In terms of micronutrient, iron always higher. So, so that's why if uh, people or, or animal eat this one, they become healthy. So this is uh, some of the, uh, we only study this one. So a lot of species might be in, in your area. We can. Uh, join together to study this one and then also uh, physical properties of starches from seed and rhizome this one you already produced and then why study antioxidant you look at here between seaweed and cigarette seaweed have many many novel products we use as agar dr murni asked me i don't know is it i use or not a seaweed actually you use your in your research especially in people microbiology always use agar this is from from seaweed and then how about the seagrass still lacking that's why we want to study actually in other area they already use the seagrass in cosmetical and also pharmaceutical but in malaysia still not not study in detail why because of is is a very 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 um, not not many people knows about the species of the the seagrass. This is some of the example of the uh, biochemical and antioxidant properties. I'm focused on the Tanjung Adang, uh, uh, Tanjung Adang species, because of the biggest uh, seagrass area. You look at here, you can see uh, from other from 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 other area. Uh, country they study about anti algae uh, anti fungal antibacteria and 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 so on so we can explore more about the 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 seagrass okay last when we study about the nutrient the important that one so we started to study the seagrass transplanting so people always mention if we compare Posidonia species, Zostera, for example, in overseas, they plant seagrass by using seed. But in Malaysia, it's very difficult to find the seed. So that's why, which part we use. So we study, if this species come in, what species can join that, 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 that particular area? So that's why we started uh, to study about the seagrass transplanting in the natural environment by using seedling of analysis. Okay, just for your information, when we transplant the seedling in that particular area, the seagrass, other seagrass, halophila, come in, join the anhalus. Why? Because of anhalus actually is a protected species. So they can produce, they can, they can uh, give them the, the shape of the other species. That's why uh, we uh, start to transplant this one, not only using one species, but we use three or uh, five species, three to four species in one uh, quadrant. So uh, we, we, we cannot do it um, uh, only uh, by, by upper, 
uh, individually or in UPM. That what that's why we join with the uh, forest city. So we do transplanting in in forest city in uh, Marambong Shung together with uh, forest city or CGPV. So to make sure to conserve, to protect the seagrass. We started to transplanting things to 018 and until now. So uh, this is my students uh, before COVID-19. Uh, also, um, I give them chance. Uh, I pay them how to culture uh, the, the, the seagrass, give them experience. Uh, to make sure uh, when we when, when they graduated they have an experience and then this is how to study about the uh, education about the seagrass this is during low tide uh, together with my student and then uh, this is they they produce a herbarium during uh, after the the transplanting and then of course before transplanting they have to understand about what species they want to transplants and then uh, not only uh, this one we also join with the uh, other department at the faculty in UPM about the transplanting thesis and then of course uh, we also uh, have a um, student from Mataram University uh, UPSI also study about this uh, transplanting of the seagrass and then why Last, eh? last, last, uh, at the end of the set, why protect seagrass? Threat the seagrass. We can see here, seagrass actually stabilize the substrate, habitat, and nursery. So primary food source for fishes, dugong and turtle. Primary food source for, for fishes. So meaning that in aquaculture, alternative feeding sites for commercial and forest organism, export nutrients to nearby ecosystem, and also interact with coral reef and mangrove in the reduction of water energy, sediment relationship and flow regulation. So this is always interconnected between land, mangrove, seagrass, meadow, coral reef and offshore water. So that's why it's very important for all of us here to protect the seagrass and then we can explore more study about the seagrass utilization. So when we look at here, what is the direct benefit and also integrating benefits in terms of goals, this one. So we can see here direct benefit is life below water. When we study the seagrass uh, ecosystem services, no property, good health and well-being, zero hunger, climate action, and the integrating benefit for water, quality, education, life on land because always related industry, innovation in infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, and lastly, decent work and economic growth. This is the relation between seagrass study and also SDG goals. So, and then research link to the Seagrass utilization, I'm already mentioned to you, share to you about number one to number four, and then come in, explore more research linking to the seagrass utilization. So are we going right direction? Seagrass science research in Malaysia? Best of this one actually is a lack of effective linkages between science institutions or scientific products and the productive sector, shortage of fund for research, weak technical support infrastructure, poor public appreciation of seagrass environments, and then relatively small number of researchers trained in promoting an integrated management approach. Why relatively small number? Because of most of the uh, candidates want to study in the, in the, in, in the laboratory and also uh, mention the seagrass is not important. So I hope when you hear my uh, talk today, uh, you, you, you can understand why we need to study the seagrass. So explore more is linking to seagrass utilization. You can study bios prospecting of marine uh, macrophyte for novel products and also other things. Uh, 
uh, might be in terms of aquaculture, and then we can help the property elevation. This is uh, my, my suggestion. So you can you can explore more about study about the, the seagrass. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you very much. And then this is an acknowledgement to the UPM. I acquired Country Garden Pacific View, uh, part of Tanjung Pelepas, Forest City, uh, Mohi, Mosti, JSPS, Malaysian Nature Society, Frame, and also students. Uh, this is during the pandemic COVID-19, my activity together with the community. Of course, uh, you can see here my clique uh, doing research together, Japa Sidik, Norena, and, and myself. So that's all from me. If you have any question, you can uh, ask and then we can uh, talk. Okay, that's all from me.